we enter the Chihuahua second season. The season number crunchers are looking at the money it brings in and the money spent as a result of the deal. I sat down with the city's chief financial officer, Mark Sutter, to look at how your investment stacks up. It's another story you'll see only on ABC7. Get your cheesesteaks here. Billy with love. Sell out crowds and high sales. You've heard about the Chihuahua's first season success. The vision came with a healthy fiscal projection. Well, the city ended up with a, a great addition to its assets um, and a great venue um, that's been award winning and really seems to be being embraced by the community. But the financial picture didn't turn out as, as nicely as we'd hoped. But the real story wasn't a home run, and El Paso City Council was reminded of it a couple weeks ago. First, let's talk about the ballpark's 2014 revenue. The biggest chunk came from the voter approved 2% increase in the hotel occupancy tax, which brought in $2.4 million. The city gets 50 cents on every ticket sold. That resulted in another quarter million for the city. The team will pay $400,000 a year in rent. The prorated payment was just short of a quarter million for this part. Partial year. 98,000 was generated in sales tax from merchandise sales. The city also gets 50% of parking revenue, which totaled 107,000. That gives us a grand total of just under 3.2 million in money generated. Those were nice numbers. But here's the problem debt service payment on the ballpark was 4.1 million. Let's see the original model from September of 2012. The city's annual bill for construction debt would be more than the money coming in for seven years. But ultimately, at the end of 27 years, which is the time it'll take to pay off the construction debt, the city would have a surplus of $24 million. But then the price of the park went up from 50 to 78 million. The city agreed to pay 66 million, while the team owners, Mountain Star Sports, paid the other 12. A new optimistic financing model in June of 2013 showed it would take just one year for revenue to outdistance the debt. And 30 years later, the city would have a $28 million surplus. But right when it was time to sell the bonds and rush construction, Detroit declared bankruptcy, among other things. The timing in the market then was just horrible. Um, there was a, a pretty good disruption in the market that drove interest rates much higher at that particular point in time. So just two months later, in August of 2013, a new projection and a darker picture. If it had been earlier, if it had been later, there would have been better rates. And we didn't get those better rates. So now that projected $28 million surplus is reduced to just $1 million by the time the debt is paid off. The city estimates it will run a deficit for the first 10 years, meaning more goes out in ballpark debt than is generated from the ballpark in hot tax. This past year, the city took almost a million dollars from the general fund to cover the shortfall. When you're looking at a potential $24 million, $28 million surplus, it seems like this is a, a wonderful investment for the community. Do you still have that strong an opinion when it looks like it may only be a, a million dollar, projected million dollars of surplus when it's all said and done? Well, I think that the, the way the community has received the project and uh, the, the effort of the team to really have um, uh, something that engages the community in a, in a family sort of way. Um, knowing that you've got uh, other development that's going to take place downtown because of this project. Um, I think that it's just, I, I would just say that it's too bad that the financing model didn't turn out more like it was projected instead of what we actually ended up with. Mm -hmm. The projections could change again depending on increases in hot tax revenue and plans to refinance the debt in 2023. Also, proponents of the ballpark point to intangibles that can't be quantified. They stress these numbers don't include the ballpark's impact on quality of life and increases in property values and sales taxes around the ballpark. If you'd like to look over all three financing models, click on the links mentioned section at kvia.com. Okay, Rick, thank you.